But moving on down. Shooting guards, next guard spot. Kevin Herter. What do we give him in the first half? B plus? B, B plus. B plus. B plus. Man. He, because the second half wasn't terrible. He started shooting the ball a little better after the all-star break. But, I mean, at the end of the day, looking at those playoffs, it's hard not to give this guy, like, a C, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, I was, I'm I'm glad that you said that, because that sets up for a hearty conversation here. For the second half in playoffs, I was tempted to give him a B minus, because I was tempted to give him a B plus just by the end of the regular season alone. And then that's the playoff performance was we could totally agree. If we were grading that playoff performance on its own, that is is not above a seventy percent in any way. It's probably you may, I, I don't believe in giving people Fs if they're putting in some kind of an effort, I guess. Um, just as professionals, let's give them that respect. I don't think mm-hmm. it is necessarily a failure, but it's like, damn, dude, what a drop off. Yeah. He was still really good in March. He shot over 42% in the second half. So that like regular, he really ended the regular season pretty well. Yeah, I I wouldn't be opposed to giving him a C plus in the second half. Although my gut feeling was B minus just because, I don't know. But I guess you have to weigh the playoffs a little more importantly. I mean, that's kind of a big deal. That's how I feel. Yeah. So, okay, C plus. I kind of agree with that. And, and also, like, let's not lose sight of the fact that, like, defensively, I mean, aside from his weak side help, which never really got to surface too much in the playoffs, he had a really rough year <laughs> at different points. And, um, you know, we, we talked about him perhaps helping with his conditioning and stuff in the offseason because of all his movement on offense, and maybe that would help keep his legs fresher throughout the season. I think that's still – that's even more – paramount because of what it would do for him on defense i mean he's got to got to improve that somehow so Mm -hmm. i don't know we'll have to we'll have to see there but yeah he knows that he's got to work on conditioning and stuff just how much this team moves and likes to run and whatnot i think that definitely applies to the defensive end too yeah i think yeah it does and not really said he's gonna work on it because uh he needs to i'm glad he's time yeah thanks big hurt you really did a big hurt to the team huh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness but um but yeah b plus in the first half we'll c plus so what b minus overall or b that's kind of uh i'm good with the b minus i honestly just because i just i think the playoffs just really outweigh everything and he was he was that bad in the playoffs yeah. you know pathetic Oof. sorry <laughs> sorry kevin I hate to say it because more more pathetic than wearing the headband at the three point contest. <laughs> God, luckily that was in the first half, right? Technically, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <definitely. laughs> whatever you call it. I, I mean, I even the all star break, it's like, not really the half, but it's like that's yeah. what everyone calls the half. Yeah, um, I cut him slack for the the charade he had to put up with from the media after that. <laughs> and he came out point. strong after that, but I, you, we always kind of expected it. So, yeah, this guy, uh, he needs some rest. And mm-hmm. um, he got it, but then once his legs got tired again, he was uh, all downhill. Yeah. So B, On to B- King minus Monk. Oh, my goodness. King Monk. Do you know Malik you King Kings? Means King. Arabic, bro? Dude, how did you know? I didn't, think, I didn't think you knew that. I didn't think anybody knew that Malik meant King. Because I don't think anybody's ever said that on a broadcast before. And if they said it, they definitely didn't repeat it every week. <laughs> oh, wait. No, wait. Mark Jones did. He said it every week. Dude. Every week. But uh, he sure played like a king. Uh, I think if we're talking about weighing the playoffs pretty big. I mean, we gave him a B in the first half. I think a lot of that was predicated on the fact that he was kind of inconsistent and maybe got banged up at a certain point and you know his his impact kind of seemed to wane for a second there but I feel like he had a really good second half and he was probably the second I'm not probably he was the second best player on the Kings in the playoffs I want to give him an A minus for the second half yeah I mean it's hard not to he was incredible um, especially in those playoffs, good off the bench. Yeah, he was still inconsistent, but if we're grading the playoffs a little higher uh, to weight the average, I mean, A-minus for sure. 
he stepped up when he needed to. He was one of the better bench players. I mean, all season really. So yeah, I mean, he he, did, he deserves nothing less than yeah. a minus. And he shot over forty two percent in the second. I mean, post All Star break, he had the highest plus minus in the playoffs of any Kings player. His, he was just fantastic, and it was it's just such a joy to watch him and and Fox old buddies just go off together. Yeah, it really is, huh? Yeah, kind of talking about that soft spot forming. It's just like, man, Malik Monk's always been a funny guy. It's always funny to listen to him go up for a layup. I remember like one of the preseason games, he went up for a layup and like didn't get a foul call. You just hear him go, oh, God damn. And it's just like you can hear it on the camera. I'm like, I'm going <laughs> to love this guy. I'm going to love this guy so much. You hear that all the time. He's a funny guy. He's always laughing. He's a real. He, he's really one of the more pleasing players to, to watch on yeah. this team. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, love him. I love him. Malik's, Malik, he's such a fun guy. <laughs> yeah. But that's so, not even why he gets an A minus. He was just honestly terrific. Consistent with his facilitation. He was around four assists all season. His defense, we were talking about at the beginning of the season. I think this is kind of important to note. We were like, yeah, everybody's so hyped on Malik Monk, but I don't think people realize that he's a real liability on defense. That's like, man, that, he was not a liability on defense. He was surprisingly decent on defense. I mean, like, yeah. obviously he had his bad moments, but he had a lot of good moments. I feel like he played himself into pretty decent positioning, bought in, obviously, to what Mike Brown was doing, like a lot of guys. And uh, he's a smart, talented player. So I just, that ended up working out pretty well. And he should continue to improve on that end uh, another year under Brown. And yeah, Malik Monk. I really think that that six man of the year thing, hopefully he can put together a more consistent season. Uh, this upcoming year, because it would be great to see him get recognized or at least finish in the final three for six man of the year next season. Yeah, I think he can for sure. I, I think he actually enjoys being in sack too with his buddy, like you said, De'Aaron Fox. But I think on top of that, I think he really enjoys sack and hopefully he can be more consistent going forward. And I mean, if he can, I don't see why he wouldn't even be able to win it at that point, especially for what the Kings should be doing, you know, next year. They should be one of the better teams. So yeah, and and just on the notion of him feeling at home, he got asked in his exit in your interview whether he felt like Sacramento felt like home, and he said a thousand percent, yeah. So you know, a thousand percent that's a hundred percent. That's a hundred times a hundred, right, dude? No, no. no a hundred times ten. That's right. You that's right. You're a little major. That's <laughs> they're idiots. It, it's true. It's true. We're not capable of anything else. So no, yeah. stick to writing. I'll try. <laughs> but uh, his end of the year grade, A minus, that what we said? Or was that yeah. his second half grade? Okay. That's his second half grade, and I think that's what – because B first half, A minus this. I, I don't feel comfortable giving him a B plus, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say A minus overall. I like it. It's fair. Okay, and then the last shooting guard of the bunch, we got Terrence Davis. I mean, I really like TD a lot. I mean, I just want to give him like a B, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm really having a lot of trouble, like actually picturing the second half. I, I feel like I'm just getting really clouded by just the playoffs. I don't know. One of the things with Davis is we gave him a B plus in the first half because he, for his role, he constantly showed he was ready. He had some huge games, and I think one of the things that kind of hurt his ability to get on the floor in the second half was the ascendance of Kessler Edwards. And like for that, cause he still shot like around 38% from three. He had some pretty big games stepping in, but it didn't seem like it was as big of an impact as that first half, which is fair to say. Um, but I don't feel comfortable giving him anything like low. I, first half, B plus second half. I don't know if I want to give him a C plus. I almost feel like giving him a B minus just because, you know, even when the opportunities came, he was still pretty solid. I still feel like it wasn't as great as the first half. But again, I think that had to do with the volume of opportunities. So, Mm -hmm. mm, yeah, I was like C plus or B minus. I kind of want to give him a B minus. I feel it was much nicer this time. Yeah, than, yeah, I feel like you're very mean that first half grade. I was like, I gotta be a tough ass. You just, you just kind of a dick. But, uh, <laughs> you wanna uh, give Lana D? <laughs> <laughs> like, 
He obviously sucks. <laughs> we'll get to that. Um, yeah, I'm good with a B minus. I feel like he showed up in the playoffs a little too. Um, even maybe we didn't want to see him as much in that game seven. Um, but his job is to go out there and play hard, and he did that. And I think that's what you're saying. Yeah, and shoot. So that's what he did. True. And he's a good shooter. I, I, I trust Terrence Davis uh, a lot. So. Yeah, to be, to be fair, I mean, behind Keegan Murray, he had the second best three point percentage. So, in the mm-hmm. playoffs, rather. <laughs> I should <Yeah>. clarify. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. You know, Terrence Davis, and one of the things about Terrence Davis is. Uh, Hopefully he gets a good opportunity coming up this next season because I don't really know that he'll be back with the Kings. I feel like that's kind of one of the more sure yeah. things in my mind. Pers- I mean, opinion-wise, I don't really see him coming back. I think he'll want to take a one-year deal somewhere where he'll get maybe more of a rotational role and try to set himself up for a bigger contract. But Yeah, I think so too. I just I don't see him staying in sack, especially with Herder and Monk above him. But I mean... I, I didn't really care too much about Davis coming into the season. I know you really liked him, but I'm like, you know, we got Herder, we got Monk. Like, Davis is old news now. Um, but he, he he surprised me all season long, and I was very happy with what he was able to offer all year. Yeah. So I think as a third shooting guard, kind of as that you know ninth or tenth guy in the rotation alternating, uh, stayed ready, was pretty effective, played hard. I think mm. he might. B, I mean a B, not B minus. B overall after a B plus in the first half, a B minus in the second. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I mean, actually, let's think about this for the second half because we were talking about the playoffs being weighed more. Does he deserve a B, or am I? Is a B minus actually the plus because maybe he was swinging more on a C plus? Yeah, you know, um, I, I don't know. Maybe we should just stick with the B minus. Go with. I like the, I like the B minus. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Yeah, I think that's fair. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. TD baby. Should we just throw PJ Dozier in there? Uh, no, <laughs> no. Yeah, I just don't think he had much. Of a role. Although one of the things that, I'm not going to give him a grade, but it's just like PJ Dozier, kind of stepping into that third point guard role. I mean, obviously they never really had to use it except for again in mop up time, but you know. Good defender, better ball handler and facilitator than I thought. And it'll be interesting to see because he's under contract for next season. Is he? Uh, it'd be, yeah, it'll be interesting to see if he sticks around or gets moved in a trade or something like that. But mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know. I wonder if, you know, Della Vadova becomes part of the coaching staff. Do they feel comfortable with Dozier being the. Th- Probably not. He might as well go out and sign Corey Joseph or something. Yeah. <laughs> but. <laughs> All right, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> or somebody else. <laughs> you know, I bring Kojo back? Dude, Kojo? It's just, I, it, it, let's call him anything else. Kojo. He's a grown I, man. <laughs> dude. It's Kojo. 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 Uh, okay, so the shooting guards, I, I, I expected a lot more out of them. Um, I expected a lot more out of Herder. I mean, Herder was great in stretches. But I kind of like Monk. Just but Monk was more like inconsistent game to game, or or maybe even week by week, even more so. Where Herder was very consistent month to month, and maybe not even inconsistent. He just got worse as time went away without breaks. Mm-hmm. Like he was great at the start of the season, and then got progressively worse until the All Star break, and then got better, then progressively worse. So, right. Hopefully, hopefully he can get that under you know figured out next year that conditioning, but. Um, yeah, 